So hey everyone, here's how to do two types of text animation in Premiere Pro, so let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is create your text, so hit T on your keyboard or click on this over here where it says T and click where you want your text to be, so I want it to be towards the bottom, so I'm just going to highlight it like that. You can highlight it or just click, it doesn't matter. Type in your text, so I'm just going to use an example. Underneath the effect controls, open up the text by clicking on the arrow. You can pick a font if you like, I prefer using Nexa Bold. Center the text by clicking on this icon over here. Click away from the text, it can be anywhere, I'm just going to click over here, it doesn't really matter then hit V on your keyboard or just click the selection tool and what we're going to do is recenter this. Do you see this icon over here? I'm just going to zoom in to show you. This circle with a cross in the middle, we're just going to center it. So hold control on your keyboard and just click and drag it to the center. It's going to lock it in place and just let go. Then head back to the effect controls and down here you should see position. Just click on the reset button which will reset it and now you can place it wherever you want. So I want it to be towards the bottom so I'm just going to pull it down and place it somewhere around here. That looks perfect. Next we need to duplicate the text depending on how many words there are so I've got three meaning I need to duplicate it three times so hold alt on your keyboard and just click and drag it up and do it one more time select your top layer because what we're going to do is basically mask out each word so that they have their own individual layers so head back into the text bit for the effect controls click over here where it says free draw bezier and what we're going to do is just select the area around it like so make sure the mask is not touching any other words or letters so it can't be like that as you can see it's touching the t however that looks fine Repeat this with the other words, make a mask, and then just highlight it around it. And now that's done, you can see that they are completely separate from each other. And now it's time to trim down the words, but this does depend on your preference and also the audio that you are using. I'm not using any audio, so it doesn't really matter where I trim it to, but you would probably want to match it with what the character on screen is saying. Of course, he's not saying these words, but I just want to use this as an example. So it says your text here. Next, we're going to add a fade. So scroll all the way down from the effect controls. I'm doing this for my first word, which is your. Make sure you're at the beginning of your text. And what you want to do is keyframe the opacity by clicking on the stop watch set it all the way to zero at the beginning head to the start of the next word so mine is text and just reset it back to 100 so as you can see it fades in we're going to apply this same method to the other words at the beginning of the text keyframe it to zero head to the start of the next layer and just reset it back to 100 for the final bit of text you don't want to reset it all the way to the end because it doesn't really give it enough time to reveal itself as you can see it's still fading in right until we reach the end so what you can do is just make it fade in let's say around 10 frames in so 5 10 and if i just move the stopwatch there it fades in quicker so there's more time to interpret what the text actually says so now that's done the next thing is to apply the effects search for the drop shadow effect underneath perspective onto the first word and just turn the opacity all the way up to 100. If you want to turn up the distance you can, basically this separates the actual word from the shadow. So if I was to turn up to 12, it's a little bit hard to see but they're more further apart. I'm going to leave it at 5 for now. To make things a little bit easier, you can close this by clicking on this arrow over here. This just fills up less space and looks more tidy. And what you want to do is just copy this over to the other text. So just right click on it, hit copy, head over to your next layer and just right click anywhere here and click on paste. Do the same for the other layers. The next thing you want to add is turbulent displace and copy down my settings. So the amount should be 10, the size should be 20 and set this at the bottom to high. Keyframe the evolution at the beginning, make sure it's zero. Head towards the end, just one keyframe back. So not to the end, just one keyframe back right there and set it to 500. Apply the same method to the other layers. So 10, 20, change that to high and keyframe the evolution to the end, one keyframe back and then 500. This gives the text a smooth wiggle effect throughout. Close these effects as well, just for organization. Now we need to add a glow effect to the text. So there are two ways of doing this. If you have the Sapphire plugin, then it's gonna be much easier. I will explain it in a bit, but if you don't have the plugin, then we're gonna have to do it manually. First thing we're going to do is just space out all the text so that we can make another copy of each layer. I'm just going to move these two up over there and just duplicate the bottom layer, push that up and just duplicate this one as well. Then do the same for this, just like that. So now there is a copy for each layer. The first thing we're going to do is add Gaussian, is it Gaussian blur? I think it's Gaussian blur or Gaussian blur. We're going to add that to the top layer. This one is for my first word, which is your, and I'm going to set the blurriness to 20. Then I'm going to scroll all the way down to the blend mode and set it to linear dodge add. What this will do is add the glow effect onto the text. The higher the blur amount, the more it will spread. So if I do 30, you can see that it spreads even further. So this is what 20 looks like and 30 looks like this. I think 
think I'm going to use 40 because it looks nice. Collapse that as well and just copy it onto the higher layer for the next piece of text. So my word is called text. I'm just going to copy it onto the layer above it. Right click, paste, add all the way down and just set it to linear dodge add. And the same applies for my other text as well. And there you go, that's done. If you have the Sapphire plugin, you can just add the S glow effect, which looks like this and just copy down my settings. However, the outcome may look different for you. So just mess around with the brightness, the threshold and also the glow width. There is a high chance you may need to turn it down because I'm using a different renderer. Premiere Pro keeps crashing so I've had to set it to software only instead of GPU acceleration. So if you do apply these effects and it crashes for you then just do what I did and once you're done with that just apply it onto the other layers. So if you do have the sapphire effect you can also add a little shape. Just add it over the text and copy down my settings. Make sure you also modify the X and Y shake settings. This is completely optional but it just adds that nice touch. Moving on to the second style this is just a simple reveal transition I guess you could say. This follows on from after you apply all the effects without the opacity step where it fades in but you can also leave that in if you want to. So to start off I want this word to slide in from the bottom. So again head over to effects controls. Now scroll all the way down to where it says video. Not the graphics. Do not look at that. Just look at this over here. Underneath motion you want to keyframe the position and do make sure you are at the start. What we're going to do is just pull this second value towards the right which will pull it down and keep pulling it until we can't see the text or the glow. You can see it's visible right there so I'm just going to keep pulling and that looks fine. So 755. Head all the way towards the end. One keyframe back right there. Reset. Click on the arrow next to the stopwatch and we're going to graph. Highlight the second keyframe. Pull this handle all the way to the right and a little bit down so that it's on level right there. If it helps you can always zoom in so head over to the second keyframe and just click and pull this handle all the way to the right and you can see that it curves very smoothly. Repeat this step with the other text. Keyframe. Pull all the way down. In fact I'm going to do 755 once again. To the end. Reset. Open up graph and pull this all the way to the left and all the way down. I did forget to mention that you can pull it all the way down. It does not matter. You can't really mess up with this graph so don't worry about looking out for all that detail that you usually have to pay attention to. Final text 755 at the end reset and that is now done. These peaks on the graph can be pushed towards the left. Just click and drag the handle left and this will increase the speed so they pop up even quicker. But yeah that's pretty much all you have to do so thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.